Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now, GMSA is shooting on the east side, sends three people to the hospital, and now neighbors are turning on each other over who's responsible. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 68 degrees to start your Sunday morning. Will we see rain? How warm can it get today? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us today. So yesterday, you weren't with us. No. You're babysitting? I was babysitting my uh, two nephews and my one month old niece. Ooh, how'd it go? Wow. Well, my mom, Patty, and I, I think we, <laughs> we, 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 we have divided and conquered. It was, um, it was interesting. It was an adventure. It was an adventure. Soccer game with two children. Anti we missed you okay. for what it's worth. It was fun. It was fun, yeah. and I'm glad to be back. All right. Well, <laughs> you know what? If you made it outside yesterday here in San Antonio, it was pretty perfect out it there. It was great. We had lots of sunshine, low humidity, just a beautiful day. Today's going to be very similar to yesterday around San Antonio. So if you liked yesterday's weather, you're going to like today's weather too. Outside right now, we are mostly cloudy, but really, honestly, that's because there are some cirrus clouds out there. So you're still seeing plenty uh, of those stars out there early this morning. Take a look at the moon and Jupiter. They're right near each other early this morning. 65 degrees, two points are low, winds are calm at the moment. And looking at today's forecast, again, a ditto day for us pretty much around San Antonio. We are going to see some cumulus clouds in the afternoon. Looking at temperatures warming up quickly into the low 80s, by lunch and then 88 for the high temperature east southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overnight, Hurricane Julia made landfall on the Nicaraguan coast. I've got a look at Julia and a cool front headed our way this week. It might be a bit disappointing for some folks. I'll tell you what I mean coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. To some late breaking news, several families out on the street right now after an overnight fire filled an apartment complex. He said Jonathan Gothel joins us live with the latest. Jonathan, what have you learned from the scene? Good morning, Sarah. Well, it's a busy scene here on the city's north side. Firefighters arriving shortly after uh, 4 o'clock this morning, but we can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier. This location is the 11,700 block of Parliament Street. Again, this is on the city's north side near Bandera Road. We know firefighters arrived early this morning to this apartment community. This is the Distinction Apartment Homes to a two-unit fire. Now, luckily, we are told uh, the families were able to to make it out safely. Several other families were displaced in connecting apartments due to smoke damage, but fortunately firefighters were able to put out the flames relatively quickly here this morning. Some of the challenges they're telling me they had to deal with is just accessing the apartment complex itself. As we know, these apartments have a number of units and parking can sometimes be a bit tricky, but luckily here this morning they did arrive fast. They put out those flames as soon as possible. And again, no injuries were reported, but then Again, Max and Sarah, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting live from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting between neighbors on the city's east side. It happened at Oak Meadow Villa Apartments off of Rigsby Avenue. Police say it started when neighbors in two apartments across from each other started arguing, both allegedly pulling guns out and began firing at each other, and three people were shot. They were taken to different hospitals across the city. Right now, we've learned two people are in critical condition, while a third is in serious condition. Both sides are blaming each other, and detectives are questioning witnesses. Stopping your morning headlines, new information from the war in Ukraine. Divers expected to examine the damage done to a bridge over there. Three people were killed in Saturday's explosion, were believed to have been in a car near the truck that blew up. Here's ABC's Ty Hernandez with the latest from New York. Some traffic is now crossing a damaged bridge connecting Russia and Crimea. Russian officials say traffic is moving on the part of the bridge that remains intact. That bridge is badly damaged after a big explosion on Saturday. Russian authorities say a truck bomb exploded on the bridge, causing several railway cars to catch fire and resulting in a partial collapse. So this is a stunning victory for the Ukrainians on the battlefield, but it's also a stunning blow to, to uh, Putin uh, and, and to the Russian people. These satellite images show the extensive damage. Fire and smoke can be seen coming from a tanker train on the bridge's railway line, while a substantial part of the roadway lays partially submerged. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin is ordering a commission to investigate the explosion. And Russia's deputy prime minister visited the site on Saturday to see the damage firsthand. He was seen discussing repair plans with workers. Putin also ordering tighter security for the bridge and for the infrastructure supplying power to the Crimean Peninsula. Ukraine not claiming direct responsibility for the attack. But in an address, President Volodymyr Zelensky references the explosion, describing Crimea as cloudy but warm, adding Ukrainians are looking toward a sunnier future without invaders, particularly in Crimea. He also said, quote, if the occupiers flee while they have the chance, that will be their best option. The attacks as Ukraine continues to break through Russian lines in the south and eastern parts of the country. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Well, trending right now on KSAT.com, a women's soccer coach at the University of Texas Permian Basin has been suspended after allegations of inappropriate behavior. So KMID, a news station out of Odessa, reports that Carla Tejas was arrested on September 11th on suspicion of driving under the influence. After her arrest, an anonymous group of students claiming to be soccer team members sent a letter to the university describing inappropriate behavior from Tejas. The letter says she asked players for help to pay her bail, along with physical interactions with members of the men's soccer team. Also on KSAT.com, the U.S. Department of Defense could be changing the name of Texas's Fort Hood. It's all a way to pay respect to a four-star Hispanic general instead of its original namesake, Fort Hood, a Confederate general. Now, top Pentagon officials have agreed to the recommendation that the base be named Fort Cavazos. A Texas native, General Richard Cavazos, earned the Distinguished Service Cross during the Korean and again in Vietnam Wars. Now, this is the nation's second highest military honor for valor. Time now, 6.07, 67 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, a group of California firefighters are working overtime to inspire the next generation of firefighters. An inside look at their girls' fire camp in a few minutes. And UTSA continue to fly high on offense. Was it enough to beat a tough Western Kentucky team? How things went during a conference title rematch yesterday. 67 degrees at 6.07 this morning. I heard Sarah Spivey say another ditto day. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> She'll explain when we come back. Alamo Dome was rocking Saturday night with UTSA hosting Western Kentucky in the rematch of last year's Conference USA title game. All right, so the Roadrunners start off hot. They fell behind in the second quarter, but just before halftime, UTSA won on a 10-0 run. Brendan Brady, you just saw, taking the handoff into the end zone, a three-yard score. Roadrunners led a 17-14 and a half. Third quarter, though, they find some separation thanks to a lucky bounce. Chris, Chris Carpenter making a man miss, headed to the goal line. Lost the ball, no worries, though. We saw Josh Cephas right there. And wait for it. Ooh, can't drop the ball, but don't worry. Josh is there, number two, four, six. So there you go. We're going to head to the fourth quarter. So we're up 24-21, and this is where we start to pull away. Frank Harris to Corian Clark. Wow. Beautiful grab, 12-yard score. That is the game winner. Roadrunners victorious after another close game, winning 31-28. to Love to see it. All right, across town, UIW was back in black with all black uniforms at home taking on Lamar. All right, so the offense not slowing down, looking for their second straight win. Right out of the gate, quarterback Lindsey Scott slinging it. A wide open Taylor Grimes, 21-yard score. Then on the next possession, check it out. Marcus Cooper staying on his feet, absorbing that hit. Look at this. Spin move, get off me, and then into the end zone. 16-yard score, big-time run. The Cardinals roll from there. They're winning huge 56 to only 17. And over at Tiger Stadium, Trinity looking to stay undefeated against Birmingham Southern. The Tigers were up seven early, but this game goes down to the wire. Trinity trailing 20 to 17 with only 21 seconds to play. Tucker Horn goes deep for Carter Self, who makes a great grab for the game, winning 43-yard touchdown. How about that? The Tigers win a wild one, 23 to 20, to improve to 5 to 0. All right, we're heading up to Dallas. That's where you were. That's where I was. So the Red River rivalry, you didn't go to the game though, right? No, no, no. no. Well, I took part in the traffic though. It got ugly real quick. Texas tearing Oklahoma apart. 
Oh yeah, the Longhorns led by seven after the first quarter, but they were just getting started. So quarterback Quinn Ewers returned from injury, lit it up, back-to-back -back touchdowns. And the Sooners tried to get something going early, tried to get anything going on offense. Jump pass was intercepted. People were saying it could have been the worst offensive attempt of the year. Return 20 yards, uh, nine plays later. Ewers really just putting on a show. Remember, he was the number one recruit in the country. as a $4 million NIL deal, and this is, uh, we'll say, the worst offensive attempt in college <laughs> history. But there is the final. The Longhorns just cruising to what I want to say is probably Oklahoma's worst loss in the last 20-some years, 49-0. Uh, to zero. Finally playing playing this uh, this game is, is really exciting for me, and I know all these guys were pretty excited. But you know, growing up a fan, I always wanted to play in this one, so it's it's pretty special. All right, so Texas is 49 points ever. Like I said, really the worst since I remember. So Texas is 49 points, the most they've ever scored in this series, and it is the worst shutout loss in Oklahoma history. Now, one of the teams we haven't mentioned, we know there's a lot of fans out there. One of which is right here in our newsroom, and you can see it on her face. <laughs> Texas A&M, uh, I got it. You know what? I want to say hey. silver lining. They did lose to the number one team. It was a close game. By only four. Only four. And the young guys look great. They, they did, the receivers. But here's the thing. That last play, there's a lot of questions. A lot of questions through a lot of Aggies <laughs> right now about that last play call. But, hey, you know what? Proud to still be an Aggie. There you go. Okay. All right. It gave me a great education. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at uh, Hurricane Julia, which made landfall uh, in the overnight hours here on the Nicaraguan coast. It's still a Category 1 hurricane, but it is quickly going to be falling apart here over land. And take a look at Julia's path. Uh, now, it is expected to downgrade to a tropical storm throughout the day. Head back out into the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, though that is, and impact the El Salvadorian coastline as a tropical storm uh, before falling apart uh, near the Mexican coast, South Mexican coast. So we still do have tropical storm warnings for that El, El Salvadorian uh, coastline there. But back home in San Antonio, it's really quiet for us. It's 65 degrees. We do have some of those cirrus clouds out there early this morning. It feels pretty great out there with low humidity. It's 58 in Kerrville, 65 in Hondo, 64 in Del Rio. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 65 degrees, 66 in Gonzales, and 66 in New Braunfels. A closer view here around the metro area, a little bit warmer than yesterday morning. 65 in Holotus, 66 in New Braunfels, 61 in Bulverde, 58 in Kerrville, and 58 at Bernie. All right, looking at KSAT 12 hour forecast, today is going to look very similar. It's a ditto day, meaning we're going to do exactly what we did yesterday. A little bit of sunshine out there right now, and then by the afternoon, we'll have a few puffy cumulus clouds. Temperatures will climb into the 80s in the afternoon hours, and it'll be 88 degrees between about 4 or 5 p.m. That'll be our high temperature east southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Looking at high temperatures across south central. Texas, 90 in New Braunfels, 88 in Hondo, 90 in Catula, 86 in Del Rio, 87 in Laredo, 87 in Beeville, and 90 in LaGrange. All right, take a look at your weather setup right now. Now, there are some of those clouds pushing in, but really, honestly, the rain is across the panhandle of Texas. And as we take a wider view, there is this closed low near Baja, California, that is actually going to cause a bit of a headache for some folks across West Texas. There's a flood watch in effect from Presidio all the way up to Fort Stockton, Midland, Odessa area through Tuesday. This is where we could have a, a little bit too much rain across the state of Texas. You can notice, though, that in our future cast, as soon as these showers and storms develop in West Texas, they fall apart as they pull into the central region. And notice that in San Antonio, we stay dry. We really only see a little bit of clouds from this low. Otherwise, again, all of the rain should be from San Angelo up to areas like Waxahachie and up toward Oklahoma City. All right, looking at the future cast, though, for the week, this is the buzzword, a cool front. It is going to be stronger for those in the northern tier of the United States. By the time it reaches us here in San Antonio, we're going to be on the tail end of things. So really only a 20 
20% chance for isolated rain Wednesday night and Thursday morning. That's it. Coverage is not going to be widespread with this. It is, however, going to be breezy on Thursday. So as we look at our seven day forecast again, pretty similar weather over the next couple of days. By Wednesday, it's going to be hot. It's going to be 91 degrees for the high temperature ahead of that front. That front will move through in the evening, bringing a 20% chance for an isolated shower, both Wednesday in the evening hours and overnight. And then by Thursday, we'll be clearing out breezy temperatures a couple of degrees cooler. You'll really feel the cooler weather on Friday morning when it'll be in the upper 50s. There are some indications that we could see some rain next weekend. Uh, now I know rain on the weekend is not ideal, but it is we desperately need rain. So we'll be keeping you updated with that. Hey guys, coming up Big Red Barbacoa Fest mm. going on today. I've got that forecast for you. Fantastic. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 618, 68 degrees out. Well, up next, empowerment could soon mean wearing a firefighting helmet. How a group of California firefighters are working to inspire the next generation at a girls' fire camp. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. The Sacramento City Fire Department in California, they're working overtime and they're doing so to inspire the next generation of firefighters. This weekend featured the annual Girls Fire Camp designed to inspire more women to consider careers in emergency services. So led by local firefighters with years of experience, campers were able to learn life skills like search and rescue, first aid, CPR and empowerment. Even with recent hires, women still make up around 10% of U.S. fire departments. Just seeing all these women around here who are doing so much for the fire service and being firefighters, it kind of just seeing it and believing it, you know, just I can see them, I can see them doing these amazing things and now I can do these amazing things to help my community. The camp is open to high school teens in the Sacramento, Sacramento area and is free to attend. You said you actually covered the event. Yeah, I used to work in Sacramento. It was it's awesome camp they do there. Absolutely. Time now, 622, 66 degrees out. Well, after the break, these award-winning pumpkins will have you saying, oh my god. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> it's pumpkin season, and that has some farmers tipping the scales with some impressive gourds straight out of the patch. Have you hit the pumpkin patch yet? No, not yet. Okay, but it's on the checklist. Of course. Did you get your pumpkins yet? No, because okay. I, I wait to the end because I like to carve them. Mm. And then they go bad, I like immediately. I carved pumpkin here. Okay, we'll do it. With your face on it. Okay, okay so <laughs> one great pumpkin setting a record for heaviest pumpkin in all of North America. It weighs, get this, 2,480 pounds. Please don't bring that one into the news. <laughs> I don't think I could. So Jamie Graham's pumpkin in Massachusetts broke the previous record of a little over 2,200 pounds. He says it's now the fourth biggest in the world and the 11th biggest undamaged oh. pumpkin ever grown. He has won $6,500 for first prize. He also got a little over 2,000 extra for breaking the fair record. They've got to be pumping steroids into these. So I didn't know there was a cash prize. And now I say we got to start growing pumpkins. OK, well, pumpkins a little harder to grow here with the heat. In the That's drought. Right. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Time now is 627, 68 degrees out. Well, up next at 630, there's a new bilingual children's book written by the first ever Latina in space. Why her message goes far beyond just being an astronaut. And some special moments yesterday. The Spurs in Uvalde for an emotional visit. We're going to hear from the players on the trip, what it meant to them before tonight's game. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. It is 630 this morning. It is October 9th and we're just a couple weeks away from Halloween. Have you figured out the costume yet? I've been thinking about it and I'm just like, oh, the what I want to do. I'm like, that's going to be a lot of work. Oh, I don't know. Above and beyond. We'll see. I'm so excited. What about you, Sarah Spivey? Have you thought about a costume yet? No, unfortunately I haven't. I might need to uh, get Sarah's creativity and advice here on what I should do. So we'll figure it out. We'll talk. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Take a look outside right now with live cam. You can see it's pretty clear out there to start the day. Uh, again, today's going to be very similar to yesterday. We've got some 
cirrus clouds out there. It's mostly sunny as we'll start to see the sunrise here in a couple of uh, in an hour, really 65 degrees. Two points are in the mid 50s and today uh, the last day of the barbacoa and big red festival. It's going on from 10 a.m. to midnight at the RJ Music Pavilion. And if you're planning on heading out to the barbacoa and big red festival or just around San Antonio today, here's what you can expect a gradually warming around 10. It'll be 77 degrees round noon will already be in the low 80s, 88 for the high temperature and a pretty pleasant evening tonight with temperatures falling into the 70s by midnight. Speaking of this evening, you're going to want to look to the skies tonight. I've got your stargazing forecast, something special happening with the moon and Jupiter. I'll show you that in just a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Back to that late breaking news this morning. San Antonio firefighters responding to a fire at an apartment complex on the city's north side. Now, we're learning they actually had a call for a second alarm. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the scene. Now, Jonathan, so walk us through what happened. Did anyone get hurt? Good morning, Sarah. You know, the good news here this morning is no injuries were reported. We are learning the fire started on the second floor apartment you're seeing there on your screen. Photojournalist Sal Salazar zooming in to give you a better look of the damage that's left here this morning. We're told the family that lived there had just moved out of that apartment just a couple weeks ago, but we are learning that other families have been displaced. Now, taking a look at the scene earlier this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 11th 1700 block of Parliament Street just before 4 a.m. This is the Distinction Apartment Home community on the north side near Bandera Road. Now, crews say uh, that's Blanco Road. Crews say flames were shooting out of the second floor apartment balcony. The flames quickly spreading to the unit below. This is when San Antonio Fire Department called for that second alarm. They were able to quickly evacuate everyone safely. As we know, not only the fire damaged unit was affected here, but several other buildings here where families had to be evacuated. Arson was on scene. Now coming back out live, we are told that the apartment community was assisting those displaced families with locating into another unit. Reporting live on the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Another team behind bars this morning connected to two shootings last Tuesday that killed a 25 year old woman. So this marks the fifth arrest in the investigation. A first group of teens arrested earlier this week charged with murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They're accused of shooting up a house on Bald Mountain Drive, killing Novita Brazil and injuring another woman inside. Turns out it wasn't the right house. Investigators say a second group of teens may have actually been the target. They admitted to the deputies they heard the shooting, grabbed weapons and opened fire on the other group's car. So 17 year old Johnny Bermia, allegedly one of those teams, was just arrested, charged with deadly conduct with a firearm. He was with a 15 year old and 14 year old who may also be charged with deadly conduct for endangering the neighborhood. Deputies say their bullets hit multiple homes and multiple vehicles in the area. Thankfully, no one was injured. Well, this is the last weekend to register to vote for the November 8th election. Many voter registration events are happening across Texas and in places like Uvalde. So the community is still working towards healing after the shooting at Robb Elementary. Many of the victims' family members were out encouraging others to sign up. The community is pushing for changes to gun laws, and they feel this is the way to see those changes. I had that mentality back in the day where oh, my vote doesn't count until this happened, you know. Unfortunately, you know, this May 4th really opened my eyes, not just my eyes, a lot, and, and the eyes of a lot of us, citizens of the world, really. And again, it comes back to that vote. The only way we can make change is with that vote. The last day to register to vote is Tuesday, October 11th. You can also register by mail as long as the postmark date is the same. For a link to sign up, and for more election information, just head to our website, ksat.com. Also happening in Uvalde, a visit from the San Antonio Spurs. Students from the Uvalde School District all invited to a private event. The goal, bringing some joy on and off the court for the kids. It goes to show it's bigger than basketball. The fact that we're able to come out here and have an impact like this on this community. We know it's been tough, but uh, you know, if, if, we, if we can just come out here and bring a little bit of joy, uh, then today is a successful day for us. The Uvalde High School gym hosting a familiar coyote Saturday. 
and San Antonio's favorite ballers. We're just trying to, you know, bring joy to all the families here today, all the kids that, you know, we're friends with all those, all those kids, um, maybe have those teachers as well. Uvalde CISD elementary students and their families cheered on the entire Spurs team through drills with some extra flair. The kids even getting in a few shots of their own. I definitely think there's a, there's a few future ballers out here. They definitely like it. I was asking a couple of kids if they wanted to pick them up so they can dunk. They were like, no, and they were making it in the hoop, so I couldn't, I, I couldn't say anything. Head coach Greg Popovich showing his heart with the kids and Hall of Famer Manu Ginobili carrying victim Eliana Torres with him as he greeted fans. Each of the 21 were remembered here today. What a responsibility it is to do the work to ensure that everybody gets to show up safely and wear their own favorite colors. Love to see that. The Spurs take on the New Orleans Pelicans tonight at 6, the AT&T Center, and over a thousand people from Uvalde will be there as special guests. It really was so amazing. I mean, obviously you have the iconic pictures of them holding up the students to put the ball in the hoop, but... That little girl will remember that forever. A hundred percent. And so her parents. And to have Manu there too, so powerful. And some of these guys, I mean, they're so young, mm -hmm. and to make such an immediate impact in the community is really amazing. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 6.37, 66 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA this year's Light the Night. Huge success, how the community made sure cancer patients at every stage of life were celebrated. And a new bilingual children's book written by the first ever Latina in space. Why her message goes far beyond just being an astronaut. 66 degrees at 6.38 this morning. Will today be a good day to head out to the pumpkin patch or do other fall things? Sarah's five will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. We're looking ways for ways to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with kids. Well, there's a new bilingual children's book. And it's written for, um, excuse me, it's written by the first ever Latina astronaut. ABC's Morgan Norwood has a story. At 11 years old, Dr. Elena Choa watched excitedly as the Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. She never pictured becoming an astronaut herself. If there weren't any women astronauts, astronauts of color at that point. Nobody would have asked an 11 year old girl, oh, is this something you might be interested in, in growing up and doing? But in 1993, Dr. Ochoa became the first Latina to ever go into space. And I must say it's a little bit hard to keep my concentration because I'm looking out the aft windows. Over the course of her career, she logged nearly 1,000 hours of flying in space and became the first Latina director of NASA's Johnson Space Center. She's now released a children's book to inspire the next generation of scientists. I tried to think about what do I wish I had learned about science or I had known about science when I was really young. I think sometimes in school it depends, but it can seem like it's just a long list of vocabulary words to memorize <laughs> instead of a really living, breathing subject where people are trying to find out things. We Are All Scientists is a bilingual board book encouraging children to embrace their inner explorer. What I really wanted to do was get across the idea of something that kids are familiar with. They like to ask questions about the world around them. They're curious. And in fact, that's exactly what scientists do. And I'd love to get kids thinking at a very young age, oh, well, I do what scientists do. And maybe uh, someday when they're older, they'll actually consider it more seriously. Dr. Ochoa says she's seen firsthand how people of different backgrounds can add innovative ideas and different ways of looking at challenges. After paving the way with her long list of accomplishments, Dr. Ochoa's goal is now to get more minorities into careers in science. There are so many more jobs and positions and careers now for people that have STEM skills. And we actually need people who aren't well represented yet to, to go into those fields. We're gonna need that workforce for the future. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. That is so amazing. Really awesome to see that, absolutely. Sarah, you talked about pumpkin patches before Wanna the know? break. 
I'll give you that <laughs> pumpkin patch forecast. Here you go. Today's going to be a pretty nice day for any kind of pumpkin patching. Uh, it is going to be a little bit warm in the afternoon uh, with east southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll have a high temperature today in the upper 80s. Outside right now, though, it's the coolest part of the day. It's 60 in Bulverde, 66 in New Braunfels, 64 in Castroville, 70 at Stinson, 55 in Bernie, and 59 in Kerrville. Feels great up in the hill country, doesn't it? But when we take a wider view across the nation, you can see really just how cool it is. Seasons are changing. It's even 43 degrees in Birmingham right now, 46 in Atlanta. A cold start for a good portion of the United States, but here in San Antonio, we still don't really know it's quite fall yet. It's 65 degrees outside with dew points low. And as we look at the future cast, we have mostly clear skies right now. This afternoon, I do think we could have a couple of cumulus clouds out there and this particular forecast model shows a little bit of a blip on the radar. I don't know about that and, and the reason why is even if we do end up having a blip on the radar, much of anything that develops out there is going to evaporate before it even hits the surface. This is a look at future cast dew point in the afternoon. We'll be in the low 50s as far as the dew point is concerned. Very dry air at the surface. So yeah, there could be a sprinkle or two this afternoon, but nothing that would amount to much out there. Otherwise, it's going to be partly cloudy and warm. This is a look at the forecast highs. It'll be 88 in Sabinal, 88 in Hondo, 88 in Castroville, 90 in Seguin, 90 in New Braunfels, 90 in Floresville, 85 in Bernie, 86 in Uvalde, and 85 in Kerrville. But look to the skies tonight because tonight it's going to be the full hunter moon. It's the name it gets around October when it's a full moon. And you can see that it'll rise in the eastern horizon and set in the western horizon. Rising late tonight, 719 and early tomorrow, 813 in the morning. And tonight, if you look in the eastern sky, you'll be able to see Jupiter just to the right of the moon. It's going to be a pretty nice sight and you should be able to see it out there. You know, we are going to have some cirrus clouds out there, so it could look a little spooky like Halloween, uh, but generally it's going to be a pretty pleasant evening. Sun's going to set at 710 and temperatures are going to be falling into the 70s by midnight with low humidity. As for the rest of the state of Texas, there are some showers across parts of the Panhandle and West Texas. This is around a low pressure system that's bringing some energy out there. And in fact, it's going to be too much of a good thing for some areas in West Texas out toward Fort Stockton, Midland, Odessa, as uh, there will be rain for these areas through Tuesday. You can see on the future cast that it, it, it looks almost tempting, like these storms are going to make it to South Central Texas, but unfortunately they're not. They're going to fizzle out before they can even reach it uh, to South Central Texas. So really for us, just some cirrus clouds out there where while West Texas and parts of the Panhandle deal with some rain. Then as we head into the middle of the week, we'll have a warm up. It'll get hot by Wednesday. It'll be near 90. But then with this front prog to move through Wednesday night, we do have a small chance about 20% for some isolated showers when that front moves through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. It'll be breezy behind the front, but if you're hoping for chilly weather, Unfortunately, it's only going to drop temperatures by about five degrees or so. You'll really feel the cooler weather on Friday morning when it's in the upper 50s. Now I'm starting to see some indications that this upcoming weekend next weekend could feature some rain. I'll be back tonight to, with an updated look at the forecast models and get a better idea of next weekend. But for now, just know that we've got about a 20% chance on Saturday. Otherwise, comfortable weather, but we will get a little toasty on Wednesday before that front arrives. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Do you do the pumpkin patches? Do you drag the husband, do all the pictures and everything? Uh, <laughs> he would, he, he asked me not to do that. Okay. Which is fine, which is fine. Okay, you, know you oblige. Well, like, yeah, I like to save money because okay. we can get a nice pumpkin at HEB for a Okay, good shout out to HEB. <laughs> 648, 68 degrees out. All right, still ahead. It's almost time for more barbacoa in big red. What you need to know about day two of the festival before 7 a.m. And let's take a live look out at the roadways. Not Oh, okay. There, there are traffic. some people out there. If you do have plans today, make sure to drive safe. Be smart. If anything pops up on the roadways, we'll keep you posted. I wonder if anyone won the big jackpot. 
All right, pick, pick three, 822, Fireball six, Daily four, 2558, five, Fireball seven. Your cash five, 378, 2028, 20, Lotto, Texas. 23, 29, 35, 38, 40, 49. All right, did you play? I didn't, because I remember I saw the jackpot and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't get a ticket. Okay. It was too late. All right, well, you know what? In your honor of you being a Powerball fan, you can take the numbers. How nice of you. <laughs> 13, 43, 53, 60, 68, Powerball five, Power Play two. Good morning and welcome back. Hundreds of people coming together to honor those who have lost loved ones due to blood cancer and to honor those who are still battling. This is the first year back in person for the annual Light the Night event since the pandemic. The event is put on by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Societies at Hemisphere. Last night started with a remembrance ceremony and ended with an evening walk lit by lanterns. People were able to walk with color-coded lanterns representing cancer patients they want to celebrate and remember. I know a lot of people who didn't and I can take this time to remember them and cherish that memory that I have of them and like I said just kind of remembering the journey that I really fought through and was able to make it on the other side so I, I take this time out to just remember my friends that I've lost remember my journey and just you know appreciate life at the end of the day. Leukemia and Lymphoma Society South Texas Central region raises money for funding research and support for those affected by cancer. This was the 23rd year for Light the Night. And it really is such a powerful event for such an amazing cause. I think yesterday Jonathan was speaking to one of the organizers and they had already raised more than a million dollars to help families in and around our area and also help fund research to everyone who donated and spent their time doing their part. Thank you so much. The lanterns look beautiful out there. Time now, just about 6.54, 66 degrees out. Here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning, coming up on GMA, Russia retaliating after that deadly bridge blast that destroyed a critical supply route for Russian troops. New details overnight on how the attack happened as Russian missiles strike again in one Ukrainian city. And just a month out from election day, the fight for the Senate underway. How Georgia can play a key role in these midterms and how Republican candidate Herschel Walker is fighting back against those abortion allegations. Plus, with the holidays on the horizon, how Retailers are already stretching the shopping season, offering big deals to help you beat inflation. It's all ahead here on GMA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio Fire Department responding to a fire at an apartment community located on the city's north side. This is what we know so far. Taking a look at the scene earlier this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 11,700 block of Parliament Street just before 4 a.m. This is the Distinction Apartment Home community on the north side near Blanco Road. Now, crews say flames were shooting out of the second floor apartment balcony, the flames quickly spreading to the unit below. This is when San Antonio Fire Department called for a second alarm, but we are told they were able to evacuate everyone safely. Now, arson is on scene investigating the cause of the fire. We're also learning the apartment community was able to assist those families displaced into another unit. Reporting from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Looking ahead, the final day of the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival is happening this morning. This weekend celebrates 10 years of the festival and crowds were back Saturday after a two year hiatus due to COVID-19. The event celebrates all things barbacoa with live performances, fun games for the kids. Tickets are $10 for adults. Children 12 and under are free. It's at the R&J Music Pavilion on Pleasanton Road on, on the city's south side. Our Jonathan Cotto will be live out there later this morning at 8 a.m. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and it's a problem so many families face across the country, across Texas, and of course here in San Antonio. So today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're going to be speaking with a breast radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio. We're going to be talking about the risk factors, proper detection methods, and how to lower those risks. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Join us at 8 a.m. for the full conversation. 
So the next few days are going to look pretty similar. We're going to have cool mornings like out there right now and afternoons in the upper 80s. Some clouds out there, especially those high thin cirrus clouds. Wednesday is going to warm up. We'll be near 91. That's all ahead of the approach of a weak cool front that'll bring some isolated rain possible on Wednesday night and overnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But the front will only drop temperatures by a couple of degrees, five degrees or so. And then next weekend, there are some indications that we could get a good chance for some rain. So we'll keep you updated on that. Of course, I'll have more coming up at 8. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Tommy, thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We'll bring you the sights and sounds from last night's emotional Light the Night event. Why it is so important to so many local families. An argument between neighbors ending in a triple shooting on the city's east side in an apartment complex, what police are still trying to figure out. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 66 degrees to start your Sunday morning. How warm will it get today? Will we see rain and when? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few months. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, October 9th. Yesterday, a fun-filled football day. Oh, my goodness. Did you even leave your apartment no, yesterday? No, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was fantastic. Shout out to UTSA and to all the UT fans out there just setting records when it comes to the Red River rivalry. Oh, my goodness. But, of course, there's always that one team, Here's Sarah Spivey. There's that one team, Sarah Spivey. Oh, my God. <laughs> But yes, my wonderful Aggies, they did lose, unfortunately, by four points to the number one team, even though that number one team was without their quarterback, but still. Okay, let's take a look outside with live cam. Beautiful to start the day. Nice sunshine, and it's 66 degrees outside. Now, you'll see that there's a mostly cloudy icon there, and the reason for that is there's some cirrus clouds out there right now, but generally a beautiful start to the day. Plenty of sun shining through those cirrus clouds, and today is going going to look very similar to yesterday. We'll have some puffy cumulus clouds in the afternoon. You know what? A sprinkle may be possible today, but we're not going to see any rain really in any way. So it'll just be really nice out there. East southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Once the sun sets at 710, it's going to get comfortable in the evening. Temperatures will fall in the 70s. Overnight, Hurricane Julia made landfall in Central America. I'll have the latest on Julia and and a potential cool front this week coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an argument between neighbors ends in a triple shooting. This all happening on the city's east side at an apartment complex. Officers were called to the Oak Meadow Villa apartments off of Rigsby Avenue. Police say it started when neighbors and two apartments across from each other started arguing. Both pulled out guns and allegedly began firing at each other and three people were shot. They were all taken to different hospitals in the city. And according to police, both sides are blaming each other and detectives are questioning any witnesses. One of those people in the apartment complexes pulled out a firearm and began to fire on the other apartment complex. We have one person shot from one apartment complex and then we have two people shot from the other apartment complex. Right now we're still trying to determine who was the suspect who started the shooting. Um, so that's what detectives are doing right now. We also know one person is in critical condition with life threatening injuries Two others in the hospital. They are expected to make a full recovery. Well, hundreds of people coming together overnight to honor those who have lost loved ones due to blood cancer and honor those who are still battling. This is the first year back in person for the annual light the night event since the pandemic. <laughs> The event is put on by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Societies at Hemisphere. Last night started with a remembrance ceremony and ended with an evening walk lit with canters, lanterns. People were able to walk with color-coded lanterns representing cancer patients they want to celebrate and remember. I know a lot of people who did it and I can take this time to remember them and cherish that memory that I have of them. And like I said, just kind of remembering the journey that I really fought through and was able to make it on the other side. So I, I take this time out to just remember my friends that I've lost, remember my journey and just, you know, appreciate life at the end of the day. Leukemia and Lymphoma Society South Central Texas region raises money for funding research and support for those affected by cancer. This was a 23rd year for Light the Night. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. 
So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Shredda Dewaldi, a breast radiology, radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us this morning. First and foremost, what are some of the big risk factors of breast cancer that people watching should know about? Women of older age who are smokers, obesity, use of any hormone pills, any family history of breast or ovarian cancer, getting pregnant at a later age or never having been pregnant and never having breastfed are some of the risk factors that increase your chance of being diagnosed with breast cancer. And we often talk about the importance of getting tested. So when and how often should someone get a mammogram? There are many recommendations out there, but in general, all women over 40 should discuss getting a mammogram with their physician. If you have a family history of breast cancer or other risk factors like previous radiation, you should discuss even sooner getting a mammogram. There's two types of mammograms. One of them is a 2D mammogram, which is standard of care, a very good option, and it takes pictures of the breast from the front and side. Um, if you have that available, it's a good option, like I said, and can help screen and diagnose breast cancers early. But a newer option is tomosynthesis or a 3D mammogram. It takes pictures at extra angles and can help detect cancers, which are harder to find with a 2D mammogram, but it can also help determine normal lesions, which are called as possibly cancerous on a 2D mammogram. So if you have that available, you should ask for it. So Dr. Dwaldi, you mentioned earlier one of the risk factors is any hormonal treatment. Does that include uh, birth control pills? I've heard so many different things. Some, some studies saying birth control actually can uh, decrease your risk and some saying it actually increases. Yes, so there's many different types of birth control. Some of them block two types of hormones and some of them only block one type of hormone. You should discuss what type of hormones are blocked and whether or not it decreases your risk of breast cancer when you begin taking birth control. Or if you've taken birth control in the past, you should know the exact type of birth control you've taken when de discussing your risk for breast cancer with your physician. Okay, so I've also seen a lot of different things on social media, including TikTok. Um, does wearing a tight constricting bra, like a sports bra, cut off lymph drainage and lead to cancer later in life? And are wearing certain bras better to prevent cancer? That's an interesting thought, and I haven't seen any definitive data that supports anything one way or another. If a patient came in with this concern, I would make sure that I want get a really good physical exam and um, understand their other risk factors before making a recommendation about screening. So if you have any concerns, whether it's wearing a certain type of bra, um, your lymph drainage, and how that relates to breast cancer, you should definitely discuss it with your physician. Overall, I would say the data is not strong for any type of bra causing breast cancer. Now we talked about some of the risks. Uh, how can women lower the risk of getting breast cancer? So some basic principles are to eat healthy and nutritious food, exercise, and keep your weight at a healthy level. Limit your alcohol intake as excessive alcohol use has been associated with breast cancer. Um, visit your doctor for regular examination and make sure that you're getting your mammograms as soon as you qualify. All right, I've also, you know, a lot of women are doing genetic testing now and counseling. So how does a woman become a candidate? So first of all, your primary care doctor and your ob -GYN are a good place to start. They can provide some basic counseling and understand your personal risk factors and how that contributes to breast cancer. Um, many women also qualify for formal genetic counseling, especially if they're diagnosed on an abnormal screening mammogram with breast cancer. So young patients, hormone negative patients, those with a family history of either breast or ovarian cancer, those um, patients generally do qualify for formal genetic counseling, often blood testing, and this can help them discuss with their siblings or their children their further risk um, down the road. And last question for you, doctor, what does radiation for breast cancer usually involve? So radiation is a non-invasive treatment that follows surgery and further decreases the risk of the cancer coming back in the breast and the lymph nodes. 
Um, what type of radiation you get really depends on the type of surgery that you get and the results of that surgery. And women are recommended anything between no radiation or one to six weeks of radiation. And there are many modern techniques now developed within the last five to 10 years that allow us to give shorter courses of radiation and protect normal structures like the heart and the lungs. Um, women can continue to work, exercise, and live their normal lives. Um, so it's a great option after you receive your definitive surgical treatment for further decreasing your risk of the cancer coming back. Well, Dr. Shreda Dwaldi, thank you so much for your time this morning. Lots of great, really important information. Of course, we'll have all of this and the full interview on our website, ksat.com, later this morning. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for having me. Time now, just about 810, 66 degrees out. All right, still to come, a contest in Texas giving children the opportunity to showcase their artwork, how it involves fishing. All right, we saw in some of that video the beautiful sunrise. We had a beautiful sunrise this morning. A I'm picturesque I'm surprised you day. didn't run up to the roof to get a pic. You know, we had to prepare for the 8 a.m. show. <laughs> I did think about it. I looked at the sunrise. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. But you know what? We're going to hear from Sarah Spivey. Will we have a more beautiful sunrises in the future? We're going to check in with her in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. So yesterday was the first day of the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival. And look, we know we were excited here. We had some Big Red on the show. We cheers and uh, kicking off an event that we haven't seen since the pandemic. Of course, this is this was all shot this morning. Right. It's going to be a completely different story later today. This is the 10th annual classic celebration. It hasn't been around for two years because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So tickets for the event are on sale now. They're $10 a person. Things will kick off at 10 o'clock this morning. It's happening on the city south side right there. You can see an 18,000 block of Pleasanton Road. And then festivities from 4 to 11. Nope. Well, I'm excited. No, 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 good. but I'm that saying that on the, the music pavilion, mm -hmm. we'll have certain things happening from 4 to 10 o'clock tonight. And then they're going to have certain artists. You can see all the name of the artist on our web page right now, ksat.com. So we started the day yesterday with Big Red. We needed some barbacoa tacos, though. Yeah, we did. You missed it, Sarah. We did a Big Red Cheers on the desk. Yeah. Um, get things the, going. Feel the sugar and caffeine <laughs> setting up for the rest of the day. A lot of sugar in that bubblegum soda. But let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast for your Barbacoa and Big Red Festival. As we said, going on from 10 o'clock to midnight tonight on the city's south side, it is going to quickly warm up. You know, by noon already, we'll be in the low 80s. And in the afternoon, it's going to be in the upper 80s for the high temperature. But all in all, really pleasant weather. You know, there could be a sprinkle. Uh, you know, like the last couple of days, there's been a few areas where we've briefly seen a sprinkle, but we don't anticipate in a Interrupting any major uh, plans outdoors with any significant rain. Different story across Central America, though, the, today from Hurricane Julia. So Hurricane Julia still maintaining its Category 1 hurricane status. Overnight, it made landfall on the Nicaraguan coast. And Julia is expected to fall apart over land here, become a tropical storm by the end of the day. And Maintain its tropical storm status, though, just weaker uh, with 50 mile per hour winds as it skirts just to the south of El Salvador, but it will bring some tropical storm conditions to that country. However, uh, it will reemerge into the Pacific and fall apart and not be a threat to the United States coastline. 66 degrees outside right now, nice and comfortable out there with some of those cirrus clouds. Calm wind conditions, dew points in the mid 50s. Good morning. In Creasa Springs, it's still 59 degrees, 57 in Kerrville, 67 though in New Braunfels. It's 63 in Pleasanton, 63 in Del Rio. Good morning. Uh, in uh, South Bear County, it's 68 degrees, 59 Rio Medina, 59 in Bandera, and 54 up in Bernie. Today, you may have a little bit of weather deja vu because it's going to look very similar to yesterday. By noon, we'll be in the low 80s and partly cloudy skies this afternoon. A few puffy cumulus clouds. Again, one or two of those cumulus clouds may grow tall enough 
to produce a sprinkle, but because the atmosphere is going to be so dry, most of that will evaporate. So no rain chances really significantly this afternoon. East southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, 88 for the high temperature. And once the sun sets, it's going to be a pretty pleasant evening. And there's going to be things to look at in the sky. Coming up, I'll have a look at your sky gazing forecast in the next half hour. I hope you'll stick around for that. But for now, know that the afternoon high temperatures in your neighborhood, it'll be 90 in New Braunfels, 85 in Kerrville, 88 in Hondo, 86 in Del Rio, 90 in Catula, and 89 in Pleasanton. A little bit warmer than the seasonable average of 85 degrees. All right, on the satellite and radar weather setup, there is one shower in Webb County right now just to the east of Laredo, but the rain across Texas is really in the panhandle right now. There is a closed low pressure system, trough of low pressure that's been pushing off to the east, but it isn't going to be bringing south central Texas any kind of rain. Instead, it could bring some heavier rain to parts of west Texas from Midland, Odessa to Fort Stockton down to Presidio. These areas are under a flood watch. And as you can see on the future cast, there are going to be some storms there in uh, areas of west Texas and north central Texas. But when we look at San Antonio, you can see that it stays dry. As that low dissipates and moves to the north, our rain chances across Texas Texas go with it. However, by Wednesday, a cold front is going to be moving through the United States. Now, by the time this front reaches us Wednesday night, Thursday morning, it's going to be substantially weaker. And so as far as rain goes, I only anticipate a few isolated showers and storms during that window from Wednesday night into Thursday. Behind it, it's going to get breezy and temperatures, unfortunately, are only going to drop by a couple of degrees. We'll be looking at highs in the mid to upper 80s Thursday and Friday. By Friday morning, it'll feel nice and cool with temperatures in the 50s behind that front. But until then, it's going to be pretty warm in the afternoons. We'll be at 91 by Wednesday. Small window for rain Wednesday night into Thursday as that front moves through and we are seeing indications that we could have slightly better rain chances next weekend. We'll be able to refine that forecast for you. Uh, but coming up, I've got a look at our favorite kind of forecast. Fido's forecast with pictures of your pups. Hope you'll stick around for that. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, when it comes to weather, you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, saying <laughs> there's a chance. Thank you, Sarah. 819, 66 degrees out. Oh, well, it's a perfect day to visit your favorite brewery because okay. it's International Beer and Pizza Day, where huh. you may be able to get some dis discounts on two coming up. I don't know who comes up with these holidays, but I'm very thankful for it. I them. love that there's a different one like literally every day. Well, it's great because it falls on a football Sunday and football starts at 8.30 this morning. So Bear everyone pizza with wins. Football. <laughs> hey, go Pack Go. Only because I don't like the Giants. All right, are your kids artistic and enthusiastic about the great outdoors? Love the great outdoors. After the break, how a statewide contest could put their artwork in the spotlight thanks to Texas Parks and Wildlife. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, two, two, fireball six, daily four, two, five, five, eight, fireball seven. And your cash five, three, seven, eight, 20, 28, lotto Texas, 23, 29, 35, 38, 40, 49. And then here we go. Your powerball numbers 13, 43, 53, 60, 68, powerball five, power play two. Good luck. We'll be right back. So if you're into art and the great outdoors, Texas Parks and Wildlife has a special competition for you. So this morning, we're talking about how you can show off your skills in the 2023 Texas State Fish Art Contest. So the Texas Freshwater Fisheries Center is now accepting entries. The Fish Art Contest is put together to foster youth interest in fisheries and fishing. So participants must submit a completed entry form and an original illustration of a wild fish found in Texas. Participants in grades 4 to 12 are also required to submit a one-page creative writing piece. You can learn more online at TPW, 
d.texas.gov and we'll have, of course have that link for you on our website. All right, it is such a special day across the country. It's time to commemorate a classic American combination. We're talking about beer and pizzas. <laughs> so today is International Beer and Pizza Day, celebrated every October 9th. Who knew? See, I missed out on the celebration last year, so I need to compensate this year. So whether you prefer a pepperoni pizza, a pale ale, or everything, you got stouts, anything you need, the combinations are endless. What's your go-to pizza? Um, oh, see, I'm, a, I'm like a bougie pizza. Oh, like a nice, worst. yeah, like white pizza with oh, the honey God. drizzle on it. <laughs> Just, I got nothing for you. So some <laughs> restaurants today are even offering specials on pizza and beer. Just give your favorite local restaurant a call. Let them know, hey, it's International Beer and Pizza Day. You guys should be celebrating. Small town breweries, beer companies, and pizza chains also may be joining in on the festivities. Well, I now know what I'm going to do today. I know. Well, I know you were going to watch football all day. Yeah, but I'm not going to get the, what was the white pizza with the honey drizzle? Like the bee sting pizza just, with like, just, you know, peppers and honey and white cheese. Yeah. Just a lot. All right, time now, 826, 67 degrees out. All right, a successful launch from SpaceX. Why this launch is important for cable TV. Okay. And. Such emotional moments yesterday. The San Antonio Spurs stepping up, helping out the community, visiting Uvalde. We're going to give you a full inside look, the sights and sounds in the next half hour. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, October 9th. Yes. Yes, I well got it. Well done. We made it. But no, the best part about being in October so far, 67 degrees. I mean, do you remember in July we were starting off in like oh, high 80s? Oh, horrific. I will take this weather any day over that, Sarah Spivey. Yeah, it has felt a little bit more like October, especially in the morning hours. Of course, still warm. Yesterday, our high was 89. Today, our high will be 88. So, yeah, we really haven't seen that real deal punchy cold front yet, uh, even though there is a cool front in our forecast over the next seven days. More on that in a bit, but first, I wanted to start off your day with your Fido's forecast. Take a look at Penny and Ozzy. I love Penny's eyes. They're in this deep blue. Super cute. Thank you for sending in your pictures to our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. We are able to put on your pups here and you can scan that QR code there, add pictures of your pups as well. If you are planning on taking the dog for the walk today, it is going to be a pleasant one. We'll have some clouds out there early this morning, but it's mostly sunny. And this afternoon, we're going to have puffy cumulus clouds out there. Temperatures will warm up to about 88 degrees for the high. All in all, a really nice day, but I did mention earlier that we have a cool front in the forecast next week. I'll tell you what that means for our rain chances and if temperatures will drop by all that much. That coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So we have the breaking news from overnight. We first told you about this morning. A feud between two neighbors at an apartment complex on the east side ends with three people shot. Our Jonathan Goto joining us live with more on that. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. You know, that's right. That shooting happening here earlier this morning. Police are still trying to piece together the details and learn exactly what led up to the altercation that ultimately ended in gunfire. We can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio Police Department responded to the 2900 block of Rigsby. This is an apartment community on the city's east side, the Oak Villa Apartments. They tell us that it was an altercation between neighbors that lived right across from each other that ended in gunfire. They tell us three men believed to be between the ages of or to believe to be in their 20s and their 30s who were involved in this shooting. Two shot in one unit, one in another unit directly across the way. Now coming back out live, I can tell you that they've been taken to two different hospitals. One of those men in critical condition while the other two were told are expected to be okay. But of course, this is a case that is under investigation. We're waiting for preliminary reports to come out and we'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting from the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, the San Antonio Spurs brought the heat and the joy to Uvalde on Saturday, holding an open practice. The entire team was cheered on by Uvalde CISD elementary students and their families. The players ran drills and then helped out their smallest fans with some of the biggest dunks. So precious there. Four months after the Robb Elementary tragedy, the Spurs players were hoping to bring joy on and off the court. 
It goes to show it's bigger than basketball. The fact that we're able to come out here and have an impact like this on this community. We know it's been tough, but uh, you know, if, if, we, if we can just come out here and bring a little bit of joy, uh, then today is a successful day for us. Well, tonight, the Spurs take on the New Orleans Pelicans at 6 p.m. at the AT&T Center with over a thousand people from Uvalde as their special guests. And as always, you can expect those highlights from our sports team. Well, this morning, we're bringing you the continued coverage and the ongoing issues between the Tobin Hill community and the North St. Mary Strip. So District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo hosting a community meeting yesterday afternoon trying to address the key issue of parking in the two areas. Remember, for months, the community has been under heavy reconstruction. Nightlife crowds finding it very difficult to find parking, forcing them into nearby neighborhoods like Tobin Hill, obviously upsetting people who live there. Now, the councilman asked the people present at the meeting to submit suggested solutions. And Kaysat asked him how he plans to develop these solutions if he plans to present it to the city council. We're going to um, collect all this input, distill it down, and then um, you know, revisit with the community and say, look, this, these are the top um, solutions we heard. This is the feedback we heard on how it would or would not work and, and see where we can go from there. No word yet on when the next meeting is, but it still remains unclear how the best suggested solutions could finally be put into action. Well, trending right now on KSAT.com, a, a women's soccer coach at the University of Texas Permian Basin has been suspended after allegations of inappropriate behavior. So KMID, a news station out of Odessa, reports Carla Tejas was arrested on September 11th of suspicion of driving under the influence. So after her arrest, an anonymous group of students claiming to be the soccer team members sent a letter to the university officials describing inappropriate behavior from Tejas. So the letter says she asked players to help pay her bail along with physical interactions with members of the men's soccer team. And there's some good news for the economy. More products made in America appear to be making comeback. Okay, so a post-pandemic manufacturing boom is increasing profits and creating scores of new jobs, but still there is a big demand for more skilled workers. CNN's Christine Romans explains. They gave me an official offer today. One open position filled. This is our open requisition job book. Countless more still open. The number of jobs is just, it's just incredible. At this training facility in Pittsburgh, job seekers are learning new skills to seize on a post-pandemic spike in manufacturing. What's really heightened the issue of the, of the big need and the big demand for these types of individuals is with the coupling of COVID and the individuals that we're already looking to retire in the next three to four years. Neil Ashbaugh is president and CEO of New Century Careers. Come back. It's a nonprofit for adults looking to enter the industry in the most competitive environment in years. We have individuals that are completing these skilled training programs and yet are going out on five, six, seven interviews. And those companies are all competing for that single source uh, skilled individual. Since 2020, U.S. manufacturing has increased its profits by more than $200 billion, offering hundreds of thousands of jobs each month. So what's behind the latest boost? At the Jenison Corporation, workers are busy making everything from firefighters' equipment to construction machinery. Hayden Jenison says recent supply chain issues overseas mean more new customers. It was taking months for parts to not only get manufactured but come across and they decided that they were willing to pay U.S. manufacturing pricing to be able to get that much faster. Pricing and product demands have changed drastically in recent years. When service industries became scarce over the pandemic, demand for consumer products and of course PPE and medical equipment kept factory workers essential. Yeah. All right, well, that was Christine Roman's reporting. So according to the latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, well, the United States adding 263,000 jobs in the month of September, slightly higher than what economists had estimated. Well, Facebook's owner Meta is warning that as many as 1 million users may have had their login information stolen. So Meta's researchers have discovered more than 400 malicious Android and Apple apps designed to steal personal Facebook logins. A Meta spokesperson says the company is reaching out to the users who may be at risk. The malicious apps are disguised as games, photo editors, health and lifestyle services. 
All right, SpaceX successfully launching two new communication satellites into orbit last night from the Kennedy Space Center. So take a look. The mission originally scheduled for Thursday it was scrubbed because of a small helium leak. The Falcon 9 rocket carrying satellites owned by Intelsat. They will help keep dozens of cable TV channels on the air, including CNN. All right, we're in the midst of October. Which is? Say it, Max. It is spooky season. Spooky season. <laughs> All right, so in honor of spooky season, a man from Illinois carving out his own place in the history books. So how is he doing that? By growing the biggest pumpkin in the state this year. Mark Rivera has a story. Good gourd. Get a load of this guy. I think this might be one of his biggest ever. A giant prize of a pumpkin that was just named the largest in Illinois by the Illinois Giant Pumpkin Growers Association. People that have never seen it before, that's what it's all about, seeing those reactions. Joe Atkins is that gifted grower who found his calling carving pumpkins and wanted more. With the carving aspect, I wanted to get into bigger and bigger uh, mediums, so I decided that I'd have to grow them to get to the size that I wanted to carve. Now, at the risk of playing whack-a-mole, Mark, I'm going to give you some of the stats on these gargantuan gourds. This is the biggest squash in Illinois, weighing in at 929 pounds. This is Joe's second biggest pumpkin at 1,580 pounds. And this is it, the biggest pumpkin in Illinois weighing in at 1,760 pounds. 1760 was enough to give us the first place this year, so we were happy. At its peak, that super squash was growing at 40 pounds a day and taking in 150 gallons of water every 24 hours for three months. And it's attracting quite the crowd. I was kind of shocked when I saw it. I was like, this is really cool here. I'm surprised they don't have it at the fairground. This guy always seems to have the biggest pumpkin, so he's got some kind of secret sauce. But for Atkins, it's all about growing inspiration. I have been growing for like, since I was probably seven. And so, like, he has been mentoring me, and he has been, like, like helping me. Now, thanks to Atkins, 10-year-old Andrew Engel is giving them pumpkin to talk about. I just feel like it's cool because no other kid in my grade grows pumpkins, and I feel like it's really cool. Very you, cool indeed. <laughs> future record holder right there. I know. Oh, my goodness. Lots of water, though. Think about all the pumpkin pies we can make. I want to know what do they do with the pumpkin? I, I know they probably carves them. Yeah. But I mean, does he at least after they're carved? You probably probably does? live in that one. You, you could with rent nowadays. Okay. Time now, 841, <laughs> 67 degrees out. Let's take a look at what's coming up. Coming up backstage, we are getting an exclusive look at the color purple, one of the first all black casts to happen at the Woodlawn Theater. Yeah, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 67 to start your Sunday morning. Sarah Spivey is going to join us with your full weekend forecast in just a bit. It's a show with a powerful story and even more powerful vocals. The Woodlawn Theater is putting on the color purple for the first time. This is historical um, for the Woodlawn. Um, this is the first time that we have an all black cast and a black director. And um, this is also the premiere of this show in a theater like this in Texas. To see black faces telling a, a black story that's so central to our experience. And so many people grew up on the movie, The Color Purple, right? So to, to see it be represented in this way and to be done well, I think will be just something really exciting to be a part of. There aren't a lot of opportunities for us, people like me, people like the rest of my cast members here. So to be able to do a show that is an all black cast, that create so many opportunities for performers that usually don't have those opportunities and to be truly, uh, truly be able to show themselves on stage in all aspects from singing, from dancing to acting. Um, I think it's extremely important for other individuals to see that there are opportunities here and that we need to continue opening doors and creating those opportunities for individuals like ourselves. If you want to see one of the last productions at the Woodlawn Theater's current locations, just go to ksat.com. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. Thank yeah. you, Alexis. Yeah, that was, first off, great job by Alexis. But the play looks amazing. I know. It does. <sighs> it does. Guys, you know what also was amazing? The sunrise this morning. It was mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. We got a picture in from St. Hedwig on the city's east side, on Bear County's east side, rather. Take a look at this picture sent in through our KSAT Connect feature. You can see a nice alto cumulus clouds. All right, alto meaning middle, 
Cumulus clouds are those puffy clouds. Alto cumulus clouds with the sunrise this morning. Absolutely gorgeous. Currently at 61 degrees in Bulverde, 61 in Bernie, 68 at Stinson, 68 in Divine, 65 in Hondo, 62 in Lost Maples. Good morning in New Braunfels at 67 degrees. And uh, as we take a wider view here across the nation, you can really see that northern tier of the United States enjoying the change of the seasons. It's in the 30s and 40s all across the northern tier of the United States, even getting down into the 40s in parts of Alabama early this morning. Uh, as for us, though, we are not really going to find that punchy cold front anytime soon. There is a cool front in our forecast this week, but it is on the weaker side. It's 66 degrees in San Antonio right now. Winds are calm. Dew points are low, so humidity is low too. And in the future cast, I want you to see something here. So in the future cast, as we go throughout the day into the afternoon, we'll start to see some puffy cumulus clouds develop. And there are some indications that we could see a sprinkle or two this afternoon, but I think this forecast model is overdoing it a little bit. And here's the reason why. This afternoon, it's going to be very dry at the surface. So even if one of those cumulus clouds can grow tall enough to produce some rain, that rain would evaporate before it hits the surface. So maybe a sprinkle or two this afternoon, but I didn't even put any rain chances in there because it's not going to matter really. Uh, today we're going to be warm and comfortable this afternoon. High temperature going to be 88 in San Antonio. That's three degrees above the average. It'll be 88 in Hondo, 88 in Bandera, 85 in Kerrville, 90 in Seguin, 90 in Floresville. It'll be 89 in Pleasanton and 86 in Yavaldi. All right, but tonight look to the skies because it is the full hunter moon. Why is it called the hunter moon? Well, the hunter moon is the first full moon after the harvest moon and the harvest moon was actually in uh, September of this year. So this is the full hunter moon and you're actually going to see Jupiter there uh, toward the evening in the eastern sky just near the moon. The moon will rise at 719 in the east horizon and set early tomorrow morning in the west horizon and you should have good viewing tonight. There could be some cirrus clouds out there, uh, but generally low humidity, pretty pleasant and those cirrus clouds may make it look a little spooky like Halloween. So pretty nice viewing tonight. Temperatures are going to fall into the 70s by midnight. All right. And our weather set up some showers across the panhandle. There's a closed low pressure system in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's fueling some of this rain. And in fact, there's going to be quite a bit of rain for parts of West Texas from Presidio all the way up to Midland, Odessa. And there's a flood watch in effect for that area of Texas. But as you can see here in San Antonio, we're going to stay dry. No rain from that uh, low pressure system. And in fact, even with the front that is expected to move through Wednesday night, Thursday morning, our rain chances are on the lower end. We're only talking isolated rain Wednesday night into Thursday with breezy conditions behind that front. And this really won't pack quite the punch that many of us want for cooler weather. It'll just knock down those highs by about five degrees. Mornings will be comfortable though. Uh, we'll be looking at 59 early Friday morning and some indications that next weekend we could have a shot at rain. So I'll be here all day looking at those forecast models as we get them in a little bit closer to the weekend. We'll be able to refine that forecast too. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. The moon even this morning was crazy. It's beautiful. Standing in the parking lot, I was like, oh, wow. You touch, I felt like Bruce Almighty. <laughs> Come oh on down here. <laughs> Time now. <laughs> it's about 8.51, 68 degrees out. All right, 50% of workers in the U.S. say they are stressed out in their job every single day. But is quiet quitting the answer after the break? Why you may want to think twice before putting it into practice. Well, over the next couple of days, we'll have pretty similar weather. We'll have uh, comfortable mornings and warm afternoons. The thing is, is we have a small chance for isolated rain Wednesday night and Thursday as a weak cool front moves through. Temperatures will only be in the upper 80s behind that front. But again, see not a big temperature drop from that front. We're still waiting on our first to fall real deal front where uh, temperatures could drop by potentially 10 or more degrees, but we really don't see much of that in the forecast, unfortunately, for us over the next several days. Max and Sarah, what have you guys got planned for your Sunday? All right, so it is uh, International Pizza and Beer Day. 
Yes. So we have to celebrate accordingly. It also happens to be NFL Sunday, and the Packers and Giants are playing right now, so we're really getting an early start <laughs> to the morning. How do you feel? You like these early morning I games. I love these early morning I mean, games. They're in, they're you in are like. They're in London. <laughs> uh, Jon Snow, for all you Game of Thrones fans out I there, do. he did a whole uh, photo shoot this morning with the NFL because they're trying to attract all these people to the game. Kit Harrington. That one. Yeah, See, I love him. <laughs> You know nothing, Jones. You, I know nothing, Max <laughs> Massey. But yes, Cowboys taking on the Rams this afternoon. Should be a good game. Cooper Rush still holding it down. Yeah. Yeah, Dak said he can now grip a football, which is, you know, a good start. Do you, do you think to go Dak, in the right direction. Dak's going to take that I don't spot think again? I don't think there's you a know? competition. I think if you pay okay. someone $40 million, you have a secure uh, spot right. at the table. That being said, have a great rest of your Sunday. Go, Cowboys. <laughs>